Good morning, you guys. Um, so today we're going to be talking about our new chapter, which is chapter 14 on the behavior of gases. Um, gases were one of the topics that we were discussing last chapter, and gases have a series of laws that go along with them that explain their behavior. So gas laws range from expressing pressure with volume to pressure, volume, temperature, amount of gas, the speed that they move. I um, mean, all of these gas laws, what they really mean for us as students and as chem people who study chemistry is they mean math problems. Um, this chapter is a lot of math, which is good news for some of you. And um, others of you are going to feel apprehensive about this. The good news about this math is that it uses equations, it plugs into those equations, and it's really pretty um, simple to do. Uh, most people really like this chapter. The beginning of this chapter starts with a discussion on how to affect pressure. And we talked about pressure before as being collisions. So as we go through this chapter, through our introductory topic today, please remember, keep in your mind, that whenever we say pressure, we can also use the word collisions for that. <clears throat> Okay, so we're gonna review what you know about gases. Um, first of all, we talked about already gases and their kinetic energy. Um, so are gases high, low, or medium for kinetic energy? Which one do you think they are? If you remember, gases have a high kinetic energy, which remember is the energy of motion. Um, and gases are very far apart. So our gas molecules are spread out and they're moving really quickly, really rapidly around whatever container they're in. Um, that makes them have a very low density. Remember that density is mass over volume. So I just want to take a moment to remind you that density equals mass over volume. DMV. So as we increase our mass, we would get a higher and higher density. What happens with gases is that their volume is very, very large, while their mass is very, very small, which means their density is very, very low. So don't forget a density equals mass over volume and how that applies to our gases. Because they have such low density and are so far apart, they are also very compressible. So remember, compressibility is the ability to squeeze the volume down under increased pressure. So when you increase the pressure on a gas, you can decrease its volume. That means that it is very compressible. Are solids also compressible? No, solids are not compressible. Solids have a very high density, and so they're not compressible. But in this chapter, we are primarily focusing on gases. So recall that pressure is based on the number and the magnitude of collisions of a gas with the container walls and with each other. Magnitude and number means that we are concerned with how many collisions there are and how much they hurt each individual collision. So imagine you are standing there and someone threw a ping pong ball at you. Okay, a single ping pong ball. That wouldn't hurt. Okay, that doesn't hurt. But if someone threw a thousand ping pong, ping pong balls at you, if they keep kept pelting you, over and over with ping pong balls. The repetitive collisions, although light, would eventually cause pain, okay? Um, on the other hand, imagine that instead of throwing a ping pong ball at you, they threw a foosball table ball or a baseball at you. The weight, the increased magnitude of that collision would hurt more, even in the same numbers. So one ping pong ball versus one baseball. The baseball would obviously hurt more, more pressure. So the stronger the strike or the more frequent the strike, we're going to increase the pressure. Remember, pressure is collisions. So if we wanted to increase the pressure 
in a container, we could change the amount of gas. So imagine an empty road versus a very, very full road and the chances of having a car accident. Okay, um, that's what's happening when we increase the amount of gas. The volume of the container, how much space does the gas have to move around? So gases that have a lot of space to move around, what would you expect that to do to their pressure? And third is their temperature. Remember the temperature is their kinetic energy. Their kinetic energy is how fast they're moving and how, uh, how frequent their motion is. So imagine gases moving much faster versus gases moving much slower. And what would that do to their energy? So in just a moment, I'm going to have you guys read a section of your book. I'm going to have you read pages 413 to 417. And then you are going to use the information on those pages to finish this diagram. Sorry, this chart. So you're going to be using information about the amount of gas. And you're going to be answering the question when this, so when the amount of gas goes up, pressure goes what? So what happens to the pressure when the amount of gas increases? Does the pressure go up or does the pressure go down and why? So let me explain to you by using this example here, okay? When the amount of gas goes down, the pressure goes down because there are less atoms in the environment. Having less atoms in the environment means that we will have less collisions. And because pressure comes from collisions, if we have less collisions, then we would have less pressure. So you're gonna be using the same set of logic to fill in the boxes that are empty here. I'm gonna be sharing you with you this chart so that you can type right onto it and you'll share it back to me. The answers in these four boxes right here should be in your own unique words. Um, the units for volume, there are many units for volume, so I want you to look them up, there's three. And then I also want you to look up the definition of volume and type that in this box over here. Okay, so that is today's assignment.